are we on? We on now? That's good. Okay, welcome to Liquid Lunch. It's me, Hugh, and uh, Sandra's here today. Randy's laughing really funny, and I don't know what. I wish we had a little <laughs> bit of PA in the room here, but apparently there's a problem with the uh, You mean radio I won't stations. be able to hear you speaking, Hugh? Well, you could, but there'd be radio station interference. Oh, you know what? That's the spillover from the alien video we saw last week, you know. I know. They're still here. Who? The aliens. They're still here. Did you watch that? I was, did. Did you think that was I a real did. alien? <laughs> You know what? It is so convincing. It is so. I felt so bad for that thing. Well, the poor alien. Apparently, the medical people at Area 51 are really not that competent. So I hear. Like, they're not even good at, at helping human beings. So, you know, what are they going to do with some <laughs> alien? They don't even know what kind of, you know. They don't even know what to do with the human body. Forget about a exactly. non human body. Wow. That's pretty funny. But you know what? He did look like he was in distress. So, either that's a that's really what good happens. puppet. You, you come down here. Yeah, I know. It's the air. And the grass. I wonder if they're going to get asthma. Because I think that's what happens. I, I hear they have green grass on Earth, Sandra. <laughs> Looks brown to me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so do you follow the stock market at all? Yeah. So is RIM doing bad? Yeah, RIM's doing really bad. Okay, well, I know why. You do? I do. Why? Because I got a new Blackberry oh, Bold. I dropped it from my pocket. Uh -huh. Okay, so two and a half feet onto the ground, it's dead. See, it's sometimes dead. Sometimes to fix my BlackBerry, I drop it on the ground. <sighs> I tried that and it didn't work. I can't believe it. You know what? There's not a scratch on it. Yeah. Nothing is smashed, and yet just it open it work. up. Check the battery. I did. Open I it up. Everything. Replug in the battery. I did. Make sure I, your chip is in the right spot. I did everything, and so you know what? I'm back to my old BlackBerry. And Bring it's it all in. All bandaged up and everything. Bring it in. And it works way better I'll see than if I my can new help one. You. Yeah. Well. Seriously. No, okay. We'll see if it. you have the magic touch. Okay. And one other thing I want to say. All right. Okay, so before the show started, we were doing all these cable things. Well, I can't wait till we move to fifth density because yeah. we're not going to have any more cables. It's all Wi-Fi. It's all Wi-Fi. We're not going to trip over anything. Nothing's going to break. We're not going to have radio interference. I can't wait. When does that happen again? 2017? I think so. We'll find out from Frank. I thought the timelines that they couldn't see past 2012 with the timelines. No, 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 no. They can. You can see past 2012 if you can go beyond this dimension. Oh. Okay, see, so that's it's only in this reality, in this 3D paradigm, that you can't see past 2012. Well. But some people have the ability to go beyond that. And our guest next week. We'll be telling us all about that. Franco. We're going to have a very exciting show next yeah. week. And this week. We've got an amazing show this week. Absolutely. But next week, just to tell people, it's going to be on my birthday next week, actually. <sighs> so why are you and, telling people uh, ahead of time, Hugh? Uh, okay, bring in those birthday I'm cards. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting show next week. It's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes, it's going, be, it's going to be talking a really, really... Talking about the timelines really, Yeah, cool. we're going to be talking about all kinds of um, interdimensional things and timelines in 2012 and what's going to happen after 2012 and moving into third and fourth and fifth density mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things by someone who's really in the know. Okay. A really amazing guy. All right. But we got a very busy show today as we well. We have an amazing show today. And uh, we've got uh, Ben Pfefferman coming in. Uh, he's a director of a film called uh, Shah Steel Inside Canada's Jewish Establishment. We're going to have him on oh, in a few wow. minutes. Oh, wow. That sounds very interesting. Allison Harvey's mm. coming on. She's uh, got the Tone Expo. She's Tone been on before. Tone Expo? What and is she's, that? I think it's to do with uh, people that are interested in uh, starting a franchise business. Oh, okay. So Tone stands for something. Yeah, it does. And I Allison's going to be here. I thought maybe it was like a here. tanning spa or something no. for like, changing your color. Well, that could be a franchise. It's oh, uh, probably, what? as long as you don't turn orange. No, I don't think the franchise would do very well. Unless you're from another planet. Maybe then. That's right. Also, Amara Conte, I hope I'm saying that right, is coming in. I think he's an African drummer. Wow. Coming in at 1.30. Love African drums. We've got uh, some musical guests, uh, Kirk and Linda. I heard them rehearsing. They sound here. great, actually. And uh, Max uh, Brand, of course, is in the house. Uh, yes. Val will be here. And, Val uh, but, and Max from Superstars. Absolutely. But we're going to start the show off with Linda. Linda Pinizzato, she's the CEO of the Condors, Condo Owners Association of Ontario, and we're going to have her on right after this little Excellent. break. This little uh, video break. There's a solar storm coming. Maybe that's part of going to fifth density. So let's watch this, and we're Fourth going to come density, back with uh, Linda right after this. Excellent. 
has been visited by the perfect solar storm. The sun kicked up this just incredible solar flare and a massive amount of energy headed towards Earth. Not only was this storm one of the two most powerful on record, it was also one of the fastest. Ejecting from a sunspot aimed directly at Earth, it raced from the sun to our planet in less than 18 hours. Now it takes a really fast rocket ship years to get to the sun. This storm, this cloud of electrified particles, managed to get here in less than a day. That's incredibly fast. Fortunately, the perfect solar storm took place in 1859, when the only technology vulnerable to the onslaught was the telegraph. Since the era in which we have become dependent on high technology, we've yet to see another perfect solar storm. The question remains, could it happen again? What if we have another one like that? Can we have another perfect storm? Well, I'd say yes, we can. There's no doubt about that. The effects that would be on us today compared to 1859 could be devastating. The effects on Earth and on our communication systems, we don't exactly know. That's the scary part. It's likely that our modern technologies would be battered like beachfront houses during a hurricane. Imagine if we lost all the satellites that relay cell phone calls, television signals, and bank transactions. And what if at the same time, the failure of power grids cascaded whole regions into darkness for hours or weeks? If these essential services couldn't be restored quickly, chaos wouldn't be far behind. It would definitely be a ripple effect upon society and every man and woman and child that lives on this earth. Solar storms can be as hard to predict as hurricanes. While forecasters lack the technology to foretell the next perfect storm, they do know that one would be more likely to hit at the peak of the sun's 11-year sunspot cycle. What happens is the sun reverses the direction of its magnetic field every 11 years. So in 22 years, it reverses and comes back to where it was. As we near the reversal every 11 years, the number of sunspots increases and there's a spike in solar activity. We call that period solar maximum. And those periods are interspersed about five years apart from periods we call solar minimum. So you have this 11 year back and forth between the sun being sometimes very ferocious and it goes crazy and it's like the 4th of July with fireworks all the time. And then it starts to ramp down and for a few years it gets quieter until we get to a low point where there's a firecracker now and then but not a lot going on. Just like hurricane seasons, solar maximums vary in intensity. Some produce many more powerful storms than others. Although we're currently at solar minimum, scientists are watching carefully to see what mayhem the next solar max might unleash. So the last solar maximum was in about 2001, and so the next one ought to be about 2012. But there are different predictions. The whole field of solar physicists is basically waiting with bated breath to see what actually happens. There are some wildly divergent opinions on what's going to happen. One group is suggesting that this next solar cycle could be the strongest in, in modern times. If those predictions are correct, Earth could be in for a wild ride. We might have to worry about a repeat of the 1859 event. If that were to happen today, it would wreak untold damage. We're going to learn a whole lot about what can happen to modern technology when the sun blows its top. Much of the violence in the sun erupts here, in the hellish outer atmosphere known as the corona. This region has long held one of the great solar mysteries, because even though it's half a million miles from the heat-generating core, it burns at millions of degrees. This seems to violate the very laws of physics. That's very strange. I have a thermometer here. If I hold the thermometer close to the fire, it reads a very high reading. Where the probe is right now, it's over 200 degrees. Now, if I pull the probe out a little farther from the fire, okay, it drops down to about 90 degrees. 
Now, the farther I get from the center, the cooler it gets. In the atmosphere, the corona of the sun, the temperature soars as hot as the core. That's as if I were to say, well, way off behind me there, the heat from the fire is as hot as the fire itself, even though it's very far from the fire. What force could possibly cause the superheating of the corona? The answer will rock you. The hellish solar corona rages at millions of degrees. For centuries, scientists have been baffled how anything so far from the sun's core could still burn so hot. Recently, as improved satellites offered a closer view of the solar surface, clues began to emerge. Below the corona, the sun's surface is literally boiling. The reason is that the entire surface of the sun is covered with convection cells, hot material from the inside of the sun that rises up through, reaches the surface, cools off by glowing, giving off sunlight, and then sinks back down. Each bubble of material that comes up is about the size of Texas. It spreads out across the surface, cools off, and sinks down in five minutes. So that's a tremendously violent process. Well, that's happening in literally almost a million places over the entire surface of the sun all the time, around the clock, 24-7. This boiling isn't only violent, it's also extremely loud. The sun is a tremendously loud place. If you could imagine covering the entire surface of the sun with speakers being driven as hard as the loudest rock concert you've ever been to, that would be comparable to how loud it really is on the surface of the sun. The sun's churning surface creates enough sound energy to superheat the corona to millions of degrees. Scientists believe that a combination of these sound waves and energy from the sun's magnetic field is responsible for the extreme temperatures found in the corona. to the show so you see the solar storms are coming Sandra I'm not could happen afraid. could knock out the you entire I love anything everything. to do with solar energy so it's all good okay good. don't fear it well solar energy maybe that's uh, maybe something we're going to talk about uh, here right now with Linda Pinizzato who's the so. uh, founder and CEO of the Con Condo Owners Association of Ontario and Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. We really appreciate it. It's now, great. let's Linda's just... an amazing lady. Sorry. I well, love that. <laughs> That's you great. know why? Because she's really powerful. She's just, she's really got it together. Well, let's talk about condos for a sec. Because you, you okay. started this organization, yes. right, Linda? Yes. And uh, in 2010, do you want to maybe uh, tell us what prompted you to start uh, an organization to uh, on behalf of all the condo owners in Ontario? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually a long-term realtor. I've been a realtor for over 33 years, so I've had uh, a lot of experience with condominiums and just seeing the change of patterns that have gone on. And we have vast development, so much development that nobody's really keeping the books. And uh, I've been the president of two condo boards for a total of 17 years, so it gives me the background to know where the problems are. So realizing that uh, unless we can get our government to actually stop long enough to pay attention and understand that the present Condo Act is not going to be, uh, it has to be amended and it has to reflect better changes, better governance um, in order for us to move forward. Now, I know that a private member's bill had gone out, but the problem is, is that it's actually even more intricate than the points that are in the private member's bill. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's go back to the professionals to get the information. Okay, so, so okay, so uh, did you mention before that McGinty is opening up the Condo Act yeah, for uh, 
for you know, people to look at it and, and give feedback and revise it. Exactly, and it's wonderful because it's uh, actually if anybody wants to look up on it, they just Google build building a better condo act, and they'll be able to get some insight into it. And wow. uh, we're very honored at uh, Co Condo Owners Association, which we also short form for uh, COA Ontario. Um, to say that you know we've been invited as a stakeholder to nice. participate in recommendations for changes. So, so Linda, to your up, up yeah. till now, do you yeah. think the the act favors the developers as opposed to the actual owners um, or the government? <laughs> the act uh, certainly does not favor the owners at all. Okay. Um, on the developer side, to some degree it does only because unfortunately we do not have a standardized declaration. So in other words, every time a new developer, a new builder goes out there and builds another condominium, every single declaration across the province is different. So how is an owner mm, okay. supposed to stay on top of what's going on if first of all it's it's written in legal lingo that yeah. they don't understand yeah um, I'm sorry condo uh, condo lawyers are making a small fortune because of the ambiguity of, of yeah. the condo act and uh, even if you get to superior court um, even the judges I mean the condo act and even the declarations of the different buildings are being if overridden for decisions of the court so where are the guidelines Wow, they're being overridden. Very much so. Yeah, wow. I've, I, I know dozens of cases where, um, unfortunately, the uh, good board of directors have followed protocol in accordance with their declaration and mandated certain things within the buildings only to find that some of the owners are not abiding by it. So then the condo corporation moves forward and it ends up in superior court. Yet the declaration was very specific and the court overrules the declaration. So it shouldn't oh. have gone to the Superior Court it, to begin with? Absolutely not, okay. no, because if you have a standardized declaration mm. across the province, then there's no questions. It's very straightforward. And uh, the builders, you know, at that point will have to conform their ways within the declaration. Okay, that, that seems to make sense. <laughs> yes. But, uh, I mean, we see, uh, if you just drive around Toronto, you see cranes everywhere, and, and most of those cranes are building new condos. Right. I think what there, yeah. there's more condos being built in Toronto than anywhere, maybe even it's in the world. Right absolutely. Now. Well, you know, you think that if you're, if you're taking uh, an acre and a half of land and you try to put some townhomes in there, single detached homes, uh, you're not going to make the volume of developer fees and, uh, and mm -hmm. the volume of taxes unless, of course, you put in an $80 million building. Well, there's got to be a demand Slip it for it into 40 well, stories. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Th th I mean, there are, hopefully there's the demand for it. Otherwise, we're sitting on a big bubble. Right? Um, well, I think the biggest concern we have right now is that, you know, at least 40% of every one of these buildings is, is almost overseas investors. So I think that there's some concern right now. Wow. And a lot of the monies, um, even to develop these projects, like Trump Towers, for instance, was Austrian money. Um, I think L Towers is French money or partly French money. So, so shouldn't there be regulations against that as well? Um, I think that when the McGuinty government, I mean when the Ministry of Consumer Services, because that's where it goes right back to, it's, it's Minister's best, uh, um, you know, under the fact that she is the Minister of that department to oversee where the direction goes and the recommendations that come forward. So after they have a lot of stakeholder meetings and public meetings and listen to complaints. But see, even the condo owners they don't really they amaze me <laughs> they really do they they walk into a they buy into a building okay okay they come through the corridor they may pay attention to the lobby they get in the elevator they go to their unit they close the door so many of them are so concerned with the small trivial items that are within their actual 500 800 thousand square foot unit but they're they're missing the real important expensive items like uh, Faulty, well, the faulty windows, the glass balconies. Okay. I mean, that was huge. Um, lawsuits and everything I still, else going you know, on because of that. When I walk by one of these new constructions, I, I have to look up because I'm not sure if there's going to be a big pane of glass falling might be down. safer to take a mirror and let it look up. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you have to be careful. You're right. You know, I Isn't mean, so wow. the thing is, is that the, the, the heavier issues are certainly within the construction of the $80 million building. You know, you look at uh, maybe membranes, the topping in the underground. You take a look at heating coil systems. Hydro is a big one. Uh, very few of them create enough energy efficiency, yet the new board coming in now all of a sudden starting to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars within the first two, three years to try to make the building energy efficient. Well, and now they're, they're also making each unit responsible for their own heating uh, whereas before used to just fall under the maintenance fee right um, yeah it can, that now? well that can kind of work both ways it can okay. be it depends on usage 
Um, you know, but I will give you a, a stat that will really blow you away. I mean, 30% of a building's annual budget, so most budgets are anywhere from about 1.5 million, and 30% of that budget, it actually reflects in hydro expenses. Irregardless, and that's common elements, irregardless of whether or not it's, you know, sub-metered wow. for each unit. Wow. See, that's why yeah. you need some of that solar energy. See, I knew we were going to come back to so that see, at some point. That storms <laughs> would be a good thing if we could just channel it. Yeah. Well, the, these boards are going to have to wrap their governance minds around that. Well, that's another problem, though. You see, the boards are not educated, and unfortunately, that's a, um, that's a huge problem. The Condo Act it may stipulate rules and regulations of the Condo Act, but the question is how many boards out there are actually following the Condo Act? Is there any governance? There's no fining implementations. Um, we can't expect our government to have uh, tribunals and these things because you're going to end up in courts forever to go through tribunals. You have to implement a governance structure. If the Board of Directors do not follow the Condo Act, fine them. Simple. They'll leave. Get good people in. Uh, is there an education component for uh, for board members? None. There's absolutely none. And that's wow. a problem. And that's wow. where the Condo Owners Association is going to be implementing structures of the education process. And, uh, and, and I know we're pushing forward for licensing of property management companies. Not the property manager. See, the property manager is only an employee of the contracted company. The okay. property management company is the contract has the contract and they designate an employee. Okay. So when you get condo owners that are all upset about their property manager, <laughs> they're, they're barking up the wrong tree. They have to be upset with their board of directors. They're signing the check. Okay, so you, just at a very high level, what? Yes. let's just make sure we cover all the major issues that, that you feel are, are affecting condo owners in Ontario. So we've talked about the construction Mm -hmm. Now, so I guess that's uh, an issue. What is the issue around construction? And you also talk about new versus uh, existing buildings. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's a, it's a two-sided coin. On the new construction, when people purchase, um, they believe that, you know, they're paying their tariff on warranty and they're going to have coverage. They get their coverage within the unit. Okay, their tariff warranty? Uh, Tarion. Tarion. Yeah, okay. it's under the new Home Warranty Act. Okay. And Tarion is the facilitator. Okay. But try to try to imagine this you just bought a house so okay. you bought a house it cost you half a million dollars okay you get a two-year warranty on your house okay meanwhile an 80 million dollar building that's 40 stories high with 380 units in there they only get two years on the entire building most mm. of the deficiencies that surface they surface after the two-year yes, warranty and they know that when they're of doing course this. they know that yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They the surface plan. afterwards. And now you're looking at, I mean, you want to pave a driveway in a house, you're $3,000. You want to pave a driveway in an underground for your membrane, you're talking probably $300,000. So every time that you have a deficiency problem, you have what's called a reserve fund. Mm -hmm. And Hugh and I talked a little bit about mm -hmm. that earlier. Mm -hmm. And the reserve fund is there to, to uh, make corrections and fix problems later on. And so you have to have long term right? maintenance. You've got it, exactly. So you cannot change certain things now because it's not in recognition of, of your performance study, like your audits and so on that have to be put together um, on new construction. Okay. So what happens is is that you as you build your reserve fund, ten years down the road, fifteen, you know, you will be able to re to replace the roof. Take a look at your cooling systems, do new membranes in your underground, replace your lobby carpeting, decorating, whatever. But you have to, you have to be in accordance with the plan. Okay. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to all of a sudden spend money outside of that umbrella, the problem is, is that you don't have the money to do it. So you have to increase the operating budget which increases your maintenance, maintenance fees. Fee. Okay. So when the McGuinty government hit us hard with the HST, none of these reserve funds had a cushion in there to cover the additional 7% tax. Interesting. Wow. So all of a sudden, all these reserve funds... Are 7% okay, behind. Behind. Yeah. Got it. So all of the budgets last year had to be increased by additional 7% on top of the uh, annual inflational rate. And of course the McGinty government didn't take that into account. Well, um, you know, you know I, th I think this is, this is where it gets to the point where it's, it's not just condo owners that are affected because 
And, co and condos are a relatively new phenomenon, and you know a lot of this maintenance money hasn't been spent yet. And if, if the if the estimates of what's going to be required are not adequate, and all of a sudden, because mm -hmm. I can see it happening where a condo, a condo association is in a situation where they just don't have the money to do what really needs to be done because they have That's to maintain it. And then what happens? Then is there going to become a taxpayer burden? Um, you actually have what's called a special assessment. Now the board has complete control on whether or not they're going to put things towards a uh, operating budget or a special assessment. The problem is when you take a look at resale value, I could name condos that would blow you away. I mean, uh, like I've seen condos that unfortunately the value is $65,000 to buy it. Their maintenance fees are $680 a month. These condos were built somewhere in about, I'd say, you know, the early 80s. So the older, older buildings are struggling really hard because as the maintenance fee goes up, the value tips down. Yeah. Yeah. Affordability. I mean, it's great mm -hmm. to have low interest rates, of but course. you've got to have governance on decisions of the board because a lot of these directors, um, they, shut, they shut it down. You can't call them, you can't get minutes of your meetings, you can't get any type of documentation. Mm. They pick and choose what they want to do, when they want to do, and half of them probably don't even know what the Condo Act says, and they certainly don't abide by them. So is it, to, to what you were just saying then, is it better to buy a new condo versus an old condo, in your opinion? Um, it depends, because some people just can't buy. The new condos are more expensive on the price per square foot, so you get a smaller condo for more money. On the older condos, you get a larger condo for less money. But the, ex but the maintenance fees are higher. Um, but see, what happens is the way our financial institutions do things is they only take half of the maintenance fees in their calculations when they qualify their financing. They take 100% on the value of the property on the qualifications wow, okay. of the financing. Okay. So so it tips the scale on the affordability level. But my, my heart goes out to the hundreds of, of emails that and phone calls because seniors don't aren't always uh, internet savvy. Yeah. So yeah. they get friends contacting us and I can't tell you how many sen seniors now mm -hmm. are having problems with affordability not because they've paid off their condo or have a very small mortgage because they can't afford the maintenance fees. Mm -hmm. And, and this hasn't been touched. Like, right. no one has actually paid attention to that side. You know, uh, sorry, I just want to say one thing. When, when the maintenance fees yeah. go up that high, what's the difference between living in an apartment? Well, you and know, at the end of the day, no, because, you know, you, you still have to respect home ownership. So, COA, I mean, we support condominiums, okay? We support um, home ownership, okay? What we don't support is runaway boards, incompetent condo acts, okay? Um, Terry on warranties that are insufficient to handle the problems of, of uh, the deficiencies and bad construction and decisions moving forward with lawsuits. Lawsuits don't help condo owners. No, they they blackball don't help anybody, sorry, no, they, they blackball the building. Wow. Now you can't get high ratio financing. You have to sell with 20% down. And that's bad for all the condo owners. You've got it. And all wow. those owners, they think the board is doing them justice because now they're going into a lawsuit. But how do you fight the courts and the condo lawyers are making a fortune? Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, you're back to the same problem. You need proper governance. Make sure that when you have those those people who decide what the governance is, you don't have lawyers on there. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because the Terry on warranty, uh, okay, the, the board of directors, are all con lawyers and builders. See, well, I mean, because they have an agenda, right? Well, I think the Condo Owners Association would like to move forward and at least hold one seat in that entire equation as no time kidding. goes on and as we gain strength. But we need condo owners to wake up, stop being afraid of their board, mm -hmm. stop being afraid of their building, and stop being afraid to speak. If you don't speak out, if you don't join this association, you're, you're you're, you're putting a noose around your own neck. Yeah, you could be eroding the value of your, of your home. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because it's all about information awareness. I mean, that's what uh, that channel is all about, is information yes. about yeah. awareness. And, um, you know, oh. you're getting it out there. It's fabulous. It's great. No, I have one question. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time left, Linda. And I, yes. uh, but I do want to ask you, is there a jurisdiction that's got their condo stuff uh, right? Some, some jurisdiction that that's Ontario can look towards for a model? A model. Um, yeah. I'm afraid not. Um, wow, I would have bad? to say that, yeah, no, because it's all independently controlled. So once the condo building goes through the phases of occupancy and then registration, and that's a whole other ball of wax, um, then it's really once you go through a turnover meeting, the condo board of directors is elected. 
So you have entrusted this building into the hands of either three or five directors to do the right thing and follow the contract. And that's the problem because they're not doing it. And, uh, you know, and sure, I'm not saying all of them. We're not. I mean, there's a lot of, I'm a director myself. I've been the president and I will tell you that the buildings I'm involved in are right to the T. We got over three hundred thousand dollars of. Yeah, actually, you should. <laughs> You're right. But one quick thing that I do want to mention because that is a bit, little bit of a pet peeve. You like pet peeves, right? We're going to mention a pet peeve. Adam Vaughn, pet peeve because. Uh, oh, I think he's a pet peeve I for will, a lot of people. I will tell you that he is not doing any favors to people in the Trinity Spadina location. I'm sorry. Too much construction. Too much high density. Too much traffic problems. Um, I don't know if the public knows. But when a developer in a particular ward, that counselor, um, they actually uh, gain rights to the development costs coming in. So I'd like to see some things being put into Trinity Spadina that are more geared to a community living style within the neighborhood instead of saturating them and uh, favoring the OMB's decisions to override height restrictions. Oh, so he's way too young to be in that position anyway. I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm really, I'm really, really appalled with the direction of the neighborhood simply because it's unnecessary. That's an entertainment district. Yes, People move is. there to be able to enjoy entertainment. We didn't turn it into a residential condo district, which is what he seems to want to do. And the sad part about it is, is that that is 90% of the owners in that area believe this. He's not listening to them. So I think he's uh, obviously got better negotiation power with developers and builders than paying attention to what uh, the area residents are concerned about, quite frankly. Okay, Linda. Now, so what can people do? I mean, obviously, condo owners, uh, unit owners should consider joining the organization. $10 a year, that's it. It's wow, $10 it's not a even year. A dollar two a month. cups of coffee at Starbucks. I mean, $10 a year yeah. to join the association, that's it. And, wow. uh, you know, and it gives us the strength to move forward and, uh, you know, and, and basically try to protect and, and um, you know, create a mechanism that we can work with political government at all levels so that we can uh, mm. endorse changes from the grassroots because we have the knowledge, we have the education, we have what the councillors and the MPs and the MPPs need to create a better structure. Okay, so... Oh, I have a quick qu question just sure. before we go. Okay. Pets. <laughs> Pets. I had Pets. a big... Oh. Speaking big of pet peeves. Pets. About Pets. Pets. This is one of your okay. peeves. Yes. Who the heck has the right to tell you you can only have two cats when the city says you can have more? What overrides what? Uh, the declaration. Back to that again. See, the declaration stipulates in there, like, you know, the builders have so put the a declaration. the declaration has more power than the city bylaws? Uh, actually, interesting enough, that in court um, yeah, the, the declaration is, is the Bible for the building, but the declaration can be changed. Then there's a bylaw, it can be changed, and then there's rules and regulations that can be okay. changed. Um, but I, I, you know, I have to say to you, I do believe that two pets is, is proper. I really do believe that. But because who of, has the right to tell somebody what they do inside their unit? You can't tell well, them not to Well, they have to get to, to the unit, though. You see, the problem is it's typical, right? See, in their unit, they want to have five pets, but they got to get the, the pets to the unit. So if you've got people that are not, it's, it's no different. Some people look after their pets like their children. Mm -hmm. They should have a special pet elevator. Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> and chickens. <laughs> chickens. So you can have your own eggs from your condo unit on the balcony. <laughs> then you don't have to go shopping. Exactly. Go. But That's less elevator it's trip. more so, you know what it is, it, it's, it's a concern to the operating budget of over problems. So I understand oh, I to see. a degree. People okay. look after their pets and there's no problems whatsoever. But, you know, you can't be shutting things down. I mean, once the bill, I know of a building right now, right on Blue Jay's Way. Okay, and those directors are going to create the biggest enemies around because they're all of a sudden trying to push forward with changes. And would it surprise me if uh, board members fake proxies and everything else to get their way? I've seen it all. Really? Yeah. Really? So we've seen wow. it all. We okay. get complaints nonstop. So the, the problem is, is that we're going back to the same thing, governance. The corruption, board of directors, corruption. the board of directors just need to have, I mean, you know, you have acts, you have your traffic act, what happens? You're speeding, you get fined. Yeah. Your AODA, yeah. Accessibility Act, yeah. if you do not comply, you get fined. Yeah. Yeah. If you think of all the different acts, human rights, well, why on earth would you put a condo act that's supposed to be protecting the condo owners when no, there's no governance on ensuring compliance to the act. Okay. Let the board of directors be fined. 
on the corporation. All right. Sounds, so, sounds good to me. How do people get in touch with Except you, Linda? Thing. Fantastic. Who want to um, join the organization. Yes, uh, they can go into um, COA, C O A, Ontario.com. Uh, we do have COA, C-O-A, Toronto.com. I want to mention that uh, COA Ontario embodies um, COA uh, Hamilton, COA Kitchener, Waterloo, um, Windsor, Ottawa, and so on and so on. So you can Twitter us on any one of them. So if you're in any one of those municipalities, just go ahead, Twitter us. But wow. joining, you have it all. Everything's in place. And uh, you can pay right through PayPal, online, credit card. It's simple. $10 is the it's cheapest $10 membership you're ever getting the most value. And our website will give contacts, too, if people want to send us an email at info at coaontario.com. Right. And okay, you can put condoownersassociation.ca as well. Okay. I okay. think we've got dozens of emails and everything. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. Good for you. Okay. Okay. So let's. Uh, I still have an issue with the pet thing, but. Well, you can uh, join the uh, Co Ontario and take it up, or maybe uh, just get McGinty to write it into the act that you there know we go. owners can have good. all the farm animals that they want. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to take a little break, come back uh, in a couple minutes with Ben Pfefferman, and uh, we're going to just check out a little video right now about uh, RCMP's got some tanks now. They're rolling out in Mississauga. We're going to watch this. Tanks. Tanks. No yeah. way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Police state. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to watch this, come back with Ben Pfefferman as like, the launch continues. We'll be right back. What the heck is that all about? Hey everyone, Terry Wilson here coming to you for CanadianAwareness.org. Today we are coming with a very special report. Uh, it's recently come out, the, the RCMP has purchased 18 new armored vehicles. Now the mainstream news is reporting that these vehicles are for hostage situations, uh, search and rescue, things of that nature. Just like they said in the United States when they rolled out those behemoth machines for search and rescue. So. We, here we are today at Western Toronto International Trucks in Mississauga. This is one of the companies that is building these machines. Now these vehicles are said to be for hostage situations uh, and things of that nature. Well, I went inside and spoke to some of the employees uh, who said they are armored to the teeth as well as having the platform on the top of the truck for the sound cannons, like the ones that were used at the, uh, the Pittsburgh G20. What do you need that platform for a sound cannon for? What do you need the gun ports for? This is a totally military style of vehicle. The RCMP is a division of the Canadian Armed Forces. They are paramilitary and that's how they have been ever since its creation. They are not a regular police force. Uh, people in Hamilton, uh, officers that are part of you know, Hamilton Police, Toronto Police, they can join the army. Where officers that are part of the RCMP, they cannot join the army because they are already part, a division of the army pursuant to the RCMP Act. We have the military operating in Canada during peace times. You know, that's another thing to think about because that's kind of a form of martial law. So we can clearly tell that there's a militarization of North America going on. In the United States, we see uh, Homeland Security buying over 700,000 armor-piercing rounds. You see them uh, purchasing similar type of uh, armored vehicles. You see drones in our skies here in uh, Canada and the United States. You will see our economies are collapsing, right? So we kind of see this could be another Hegelian dialectic uh, type of situation, right? The, the engineered economic crisis is being... Um, perpetuated. Once that crashes, we have more more uh, thefts, you know, all types of stealing, you know, uh, all, all types of civil disputes because of uh, poverty, stress, stuff like that, that automatically roots people in that, you know, that base consciousness. And uh, then we have the, the vehicles here already right, right for us, you know, just a straight militarization, straight police state being established. And if people don't really see this, the, the, the walls being built up around them, I'd say they're quite naive. Like it's, it's, it, all it takes is simple research, simple research on seeing the situations that are going on today in our society. Like, it's quite a no-brainer. And welcome back to the, uh, the show here. Yes, yeah, so they got tanks now in Mississauga, which is good. 
Why is that good? Because if people get out of control, we're going to need to quash them with tanks. So is this, is this the first actual step into the whole police state people talk about? I don't know. No, what police state? Where did don't you be hear ridiculous. that they have tanks in Mississauga? It was just there on the video. It's on yeah, YouTube. <laughs> just watch the show later, you'll see. Yeah, okay. yeah, YouTube, so it's got to be right, right? Exactly. Okay, but we're uh, changing course here a little bit. We've got uh, filmmaker Ben Pfefferman here. And Ben, welcome to the show. Hi, Hi thanks so much for having me. Now, so this is, uh, your, I guess, your second major film, right? That's right. And you're an activist, and uh, you get the word out through your filmmaking, which is uh, a great way to do it. Exactly, yeah. Um, I just care about the issues, and film is my way to tell my story. Okay. And that's what I've been doing. All right. Well, why don't we watch the, this, this film is called, uh, maybe you want to just introduce it. And we're yeah, going to see sure. the trailer and then come back and chat about it. Um, it's called Shashtil, which is Yiddish for Be Quiet. And it's a look inside Canada's Jewish establishment. Okay. So let's watch this, uh, the trailer for it now, and we'll come back and uh, carry on the conversation with Ben right after this. In the late 18th century, the first Jewish settlers proclaimed Canada to be their new home. Not only did this community survive, it thrived. But with prosperity came a divide. Over time, it has become the Federation structures which have dominated the political and social reality of Jews more so than synagogues or any other institution. The Jewish federations were created to raise funds and to help build and sustain a vibrant Jewish community. The generosity of its people has made that possible year after year. Now that the power has been centralized into this federation system, what does that mean for members of the Jewish community? Will there be an era of open dialogue, coalition building, and grassroots volunteerism? Or will there be an era where the community is told to stop asking questions and shush deal? So there's the trailer of Shaw Steel, and uh, I, it's going to be, uh, people in Toronto can see that uh, beginning September 6th, yeah, right? It's uh, September 6th at a show called Beth Tikva, which is at uh, Bathurst and Finch, uh, sorry, Bayview and Finch. Okay. So um, let's talk about your motivations for making this film, first of all, because you are an activist. What's yeah. it, like, I mean, what's your... You know, what's your main theme as an activist, and, and, and what was it that prompted you to make this film? Um, it basically started just by looking around in my community. Um, I have friends who, you know, can't afford to send their children to Jewish day school. Um, I was shocked to find out that there's 50,000 Jews living in poverty in Canada, and many Holocaust survivors, you know, can't even pay their bills. And at the same time, when I see these incredibly large Jewish community centers being erected all over the city, it made me think that maybe we have a priority problem. Um, and so I embarked on this journey to sort of look into Canada's Jewish community and figure out you know, how we prioritize and how we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it sounded like, from what I gather from seeing the trailer there, that there's been an element of centralization in terms of the uh, these are these are community fundraising organizations that are are there to help the community. Kind of, it kind of reminded me of, of the centralized, the, like the United Way, where a lot of different organizations get their funding through one fundraising mechanism. Is that accurate? Exactly. Uh, Jewish Federation mm -hmm. started in 1915 and 1917 in Toronto and Montreal, and the goal is simple: just to be an umbrella organization to raise money and um, distribute that money to all of its uh, local partners. And more so throughout the 90s and in the past few years, um, that, uh, we, they're called federations and they exist in every city, uh, has been centralized um, into one sort of mega powerful authority 
Um, and that's where the issues of transparency and accountability come into place uh, now that there's not more than sort of not more than one voice in the community. Okay, so and and I, the issues that you look at in the film, I mean, one of them is education, uh, second is po the issue of poverty, the third advocacy, and the fourth one uh, you just mentioned accountability and transparency. Um, it sounds like you're talking to the, talking about the government to me. Quite frankly, well, it's, it, sounds, it almost it reminds like the us systemic in everything. It, it kind of reminds me, condo, me yeah. in, 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 of our last interview. Uh, yeah, it's always it's a governance issue, and who's making the decisions, and what are the priorities? Exactly. So um, it's like same same problem, just different group. <laughs> yeah, we you know I, I haven't really looked at other uh, religious groups and how their organization structures are, but. Again, you know, we just have a larger and larger, let's call it, Jewish government, um, and less and less people making uh, decisions. And what is a little bit different that in the Jewish community is um, these federations are not democracies. Um, they're not. Uh, they're not elected by any means, um, and there's no sort of. You know, at least in government, when Bev Oda spends sixteen dollars on a glass of orange juice, everyone hears about it. In the Jewish community, there isn't an independent media to sort of keep them honest and uh, mm. I think because of that we see some uh, you know misuses of money okay and, and and in fact that's where you got the uh, the title for the film right could you want to just tell the story about to what exactly how that phrase shash deal was used yeah sure um, shash deal uh, it's Yiddish for be quiet or hush up um, and during the 1930s when anti-semitism um, was rampant the rise of the Nazi party in Europe uh, the Jewish community leaders told the community, shush deal, you know, don't make a fuss, don't talk about the Holocaust, you know, we'll, we'll take care of it ourselves. Um, and we're seeing that, that expression, that theme come back today in, in, in the sense that the leaders are telling the community, don't ask questions on how money's spent, don't worry, we're spending it properly and, and you don't need to worry about it. Trust us. Exactly. Trust us. Shush deal, be quiet, don't ask questions, we got it, we're, we're good. Now, so. did you see any actual evidence in, in, in making the film that, that the money is being spent improperly? And, and, and it's, you know, I just want to say, you know, what does improperly mean? You know, because it's being spent and some people might think it's a great idea and some people mm -hmm. might not That's think. A and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's always, you know, it's a question of how do you make those decisions. But yeah. did you see any evidence of, I don't know, corruption or just dirty dealing? So there's nothing illegal going on. Okay. So they're not breaking the law. Um, what's happening is, firstly, you have organizations like Money Sense Magazine, which releases their Charity 100. Uh, they gave UJA, which is the Toronto Federation, the lowest possible score for accountability. Um, mm -hmm. Charity, Na uh, Charity Navigator uh, and Charity Intelligence, sorry, which is the Canadian one, also gave UJA the lowest possible score. And the number, the sort of overhead that they tell the Jewish community based on their tax records is very different from how much gets to the people. So they'll tell you, you know, our fundraising costs are less than 10%. And if you actually look at the levels of bureaucracy that exist, and each one has its own overhead, by the time it gets to the front organizations who need them, you've lost, you know, almost 30 cents to a dollar. Wow. So how long did it take you to make this film? Uh, it's, I started in December. I spent uh, a month just researching and reading all about the Jewish community and its history. Um, and I just finished it recently, so it's been about an eight-month process. So, Ben, is there anything in that time that shocks you the most? Is there something you found that was really surprising to you? Yeah, um, when I started out, uh, you know, people sort of looked at me like I was crazy. Like, you, you can't, you can't, the expression shush everyone deal. uses. Ben, shush deal. Yeah, shush What are you deal. doing? Uh, you can't air the dirty laundry in public. You know, that, that's right here from everyone. Look, the Jewish community, we have our issues, but let's keep it inside. Let's not, uh, let's not talk about it in, in public. And I, I got a lot of negative responses when I was first doing it. And I've seen a, a tr almost, a, almost a 180 from the perceptions of the community when I started to now. And people are open to talking about it. There's more dialogue. And that's really my goal, is I want people to talk about these issues and not be afraid that there's going to be repercussions for speaking out. So they're supporting mm. you now, in other words. Yeah, the obvious, you know, the organized, federated you know, system is very against what I'm doing, and they're very scared that the film is going to, how it's going to impact them. 
but the grassroots everyday person um, for the most part is very supportive of the film and, and what I'm trying to accomplish. Well, when people give money to uh, organizations that are supposed to be helping the community, want, they want to make sure that that money is used as, as, as well good. as possible, yeah. right? Yeah. Are there any solutions that came to your mind or, mm. or the, the film might point to through going through this process, Ben? Did you find any, you know, what would you like to see ideally the situation look like right. for these organizations to accomplish their objectives? Um, so as a filmmaker, I didn't want to put any solutions in the film. I just wanted to ask all the questions and let people decide. But the feedback I got from everyone was, we want an answer. You got, you got to tell us something. Uh, <laughs> so That's Shashdil part two. Right. <laughs> so I sort of compromised and uh, I threw uh, one solution. And that's very simply, let's skip the middleman. You know, if you care about Jewish education, then cut a check to the schools or synagogues. And if you care about fighting poverty in the Jewish community, you know, give to social services. Um, let's skip this middleman, uh, which is the, the federations, um, which you know pay their executives sometimes half a million dollars, all these cocktail parties and expense accounts and all this. And let's really just, in the era of the internet, we know what's going on, and let's mm -hmm. give directly to the cause. Because there's nobody watching these guys, right? Right. So um, the Canada Revenue Agency. Um, every charity has to file a T3010 okay. where so you can see a little bit about what's going on. Um, the advocacy component uh, which meets with government officials and the Israeli government, they're a nonprofit but they're not a charity. So this organization called the Center for Jewish and Israel Affairs, we have no idea how they're spending their money. We have zero clue. They don't have to take it public? They're not, the records no. aren't public? No, if you're not a charity, you don't have to release any of your financial information to the public. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay, well, wow. people will get a chance to see this film. And, and by the way, how long is, is the, the film? Yeah, it's 45 minutes, so okay. the new lingo is uh, a featurette. A featurette. Okay. Featurette, oh, that's wow. what they call okay. it in the business. That could be an hour long on, on <laughs> TV with commercials. But, that's right, that's but right. Ben, it's, uh, so is this the, the debut on uh, September 6th, the premiere? Yeah, it's the, uh, the world premiere. And how long is it running? The film? Yeah. How? Yeah, 45 minutes. No, no, but how, oh, how, how long is it running? Um, I don't have a second screening yet, but okay, um, got it. hopefully it'll make a, a tour through the Jewish film festivals and doc festivals. Is that your okay. hope? Is that your goal to get it out there? Because I would imagine you want, you, you want more than just one viewing, right? Yeah, so I have two. I have the, I'd like to do sort of a festival tour, but I also want to start something new called the living room tour. If you have 10 friends and you want to see the film, I'll come to your living room, I'll, I'll show you the movie, and we'll talk about the issues. That's a great idea. It, it seems to me, Ben, you know, as an activist, that filmmaking really today is a great way to just get the, the, get the, the dialogue yeah. going about it. And, and, you know, probably, maybe, maybe it's the most effective way to be an activist, period. Absolutely. I think the way to speak to, to my generation, you know, I'm 28, is through video and documentaries. and. Um, that's why I've sort of chosen this medium to get that message across. Okay, so it's at the Beth Tikva Synagogue, uh, September 6th at 8 o'clock. How do people get tickets? Um, so this is very unusual, but it's a free screening. So Is there going to be popcorn? Up. Popcorn? Uh, we do have a dessert reception. Okay. Oh, that sounds like fun. Do you fun. have a microwave because they can bring <laughs> their own popcorn, just nuke it? Just... Uh, I, <laughs> I, I just don't know. It there might be some uh, dietary restrictions put it, bringing your own popcorn, but... Put it in a cooler. <laughs> okay, all right. They can buy the cooked popcorn, for God's sake, Ben. Ben, okay. So anyway, congratulations on getting the it, film it made and, the and getting it shown. Amazing. And, uh, Thank you very and much. And good luck with, good luck with uh, all your reforming advocacy. the system. Thank you so much. And what's your and, next and film going to be? He's going to be running for politics. That's the next I thing. don't know. I'm, uh, I'm leaving, you, it, leaving it open. Okay. Change the political All right. Do you have system. a website or something that uh, people can get and stay in touch with you? I do. Film? It's Shah, S-H-A hyphen Stiel, S-H-T-I-L dot com. Okay. All right, Ben. Good Thanks luck. for doing this today. And thank, thank you, you so much for doing. having me. Thank All right. you for believing in this. Thank okay. you. We'll see you again. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back. Allison Harvey is here. Yeah, um, and uh, maybe we'll uh, get some of that music going with uh, Kirk and uh, Linda. As Liquid Lunch continues, we'll be right back. Okay, we're with the Reed Effect. And this song is called Something. It's going to be coming on our, uh, our new CD that should be out later this year.
much space Always getting in the way Something's always getting in the way Something's building up inside Something's sinking down below Living in a rigid circle Spinning in a lower spiral Swallowed by a river flowing down Oh, it's right there Just out of reach Can't put my finger on what's holding me There's always something That brings me down the call A comatose oracle Getting tuned down at every station Peering around every corner Searching for what's been lost for so long Oh, it's right there Just out of reach Can't put my finger on what's holding me There's always something That gets me high But well, now I'm getting really high they like me better when I'm high But don't get me too high this time Cause I'm getting in a groove Where my body wants to move And I'm trying not to lose My worried mind again That's right, yeah, that's the name of the band, The Reed Effect. Yeah, and that's yes. uh, you, you're Kirk. That's right. Kirk Reed. That's right. And that's me. the beautiful Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> playing, playing the bass over there. <laughs> so, um, Kirk uh, and or Melinda, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about, about 
the Reed Effect, and you're in the Superstars contest, and that's that right. song sounded kind of Soundgarden-ish. Oh yeah, we're big fans of Soundgarden. Both really of intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah really we were uh, intense. big '90s fans, the grunge movement, uh, Stone Temple Pilots, all that. Yeah, we, we often play on electric instruments. In fact, usually we're on electric, but yeah, yeah. we pick up the acoustics once in a while. And actually, we're uh, just two thirds of the Reed Effect. We usually have a drummer. We usually have amps and a uh, big drum, big sound and stuff. But we love doing yeah. the the duo uh, unplugged versions of the uh, songs yeah. as well. Yeah. Are you um, guys playing a lot of clubs? Uh, yeah, yeah. We played uh, the Horseshoe a couple weeks ago. Nice. And we, we're playing uh, Cherry Cola. Is actually yeah, September 29th. If I can do a shameless little plug. Sure, here. for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where? <laughs> uh, at Cherry, uh, Cherry Colas. Colas. Yeah, Queen and Bathurst. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's, yeah, it's really cool. You've never heard of Cherry Colas. Yeah, I haven't heard of it either. Where oh, is oh, that? Really? It's yeah, just, it's just north of Queen on the west side. It's uh, like on Bathurst. it's really hard. To, if you walk past it, you'll be like, "Hey, there's a club there." It's actually really phenomenal. It's really place. cool. Yeah, is it yeah. a little place or is it? Yeah, uh, it's for, yeah, fairly small. Yeah, but it's very hip and uh, they have a lot of regulars there. Is yeah. it smaller than the Horseshoe? Yes. Or is it, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's absolutely small. But the sound yeah. is great and yeah, the great atmosphere sound. is fantastic and the the people who work there are amazing. So yeah, that's nice. So that's a big job to to. Uh, with just three of you to come up with a big electric sound like that. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, like we try to make use of our effects pedals as much as possible. Oh, yeah. Try to get a big. We big have a sound. lot of fun on stage. Oh yeah. We've absolutely. been told that people people we get off the stage and people are like, "How did three people make that much sound?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We make use of the two vocals as well, um, uh, as much harmonies just to you know fatten up the sound. Yeah, absolutely. And everything. Yeah. What was that song called? Uh, that's, that song was called Something. Uh, it's not on the CD that I recorded before, but uh, it's going to be on the new one that's uh, uh, coming up. We hope to get in the studio within a month or so. So we have a whole other CD written. Yeah. I, I did record my own CD about a year and a half ago. and um, like I wrote all the songs and put it all together. And then I put the band together subsequent to the release of the CD. And then so the band, we've been playing all those songs. And over the last year and a half, we wrote another album as well. So we're getting ready to do it. Uh, so how has it changed? Um, how Has it changed this album now that you have the band? Uh, yeah, it has. Like, um, we went through three drummers last year. And the third one is a keeper. So we're really yeah. happy with him. And, wow. Uh, the, the sound that... Uh, the grooves that he comes up with in the beats and everything he's it seems phenomenal. to fit yeah it fits the uh, the band like a and he's got a great attitude you know? oh is yeah it's really cool good vibe oh, yeah. yeah very <laughs> steady yeah like, yeah and he's he, only 22 he clock, like a human clock time clock? yeah fortunately yeah yeah and he seems to keep uh you know respect the song and try to bring in something tasty not try to overdo it and uh you know, be very sensitive to uh, the the songwriting process. Now, do you find though that when you have a different style drummer, that it might change up some of the lyrics or some of what you write because the feel of it is different? Um, not really the lyrics, um, because I usually try, as far as I'm concerned, like I try to write um, the songs more or less on my own. Okay. And then I and then I'll bring it to the That's band. That's not always true. Yeah, no, not always. <laughs> some of them, but the, the, the new ones uh, lately, yeah. It's I've been, the glory hog. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's a glory hog. <laughs> the Reed Effect. Somebody yeah, has to be a glory a, hog. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's a very collaborative effort, but Kirk is You know, is the scandals the, are already starting. Yeah. See, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. that. Well, eh? that's, that's why this we're here. This is good. We know you're going to make it now because the scandals are all, you're already thinking scandals. Good Yeah, any press is good press, right? Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, listen, um, uh, so the 29th, people can see it, the Cherry Colas, the Cherry Colas and right. you're in the Superstars yeah. contest, Superstars yeah, with a Z dot CA. Have you guys already been on the Superstars? Have you guys performed yet? We did our initial performance, yeah. Okay. Yeah, at Wise Guys a couple weeks ago. And how'd that go? Yeah, it was good. Really it was well. A lot of fun. Yeah, we yeah. played this same song, and we actually did a second song as well. So. Wow, nice. Well, we're, we're looking forward to having a second song from you guys uh, a little bit later in the show. Okay. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, come back... Um, and uh, talk to um, <laughs> continuity, continuity uh, with Allison Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna fix this in editing. <laughs> Actually, Magic when I said we're it. gonna, we're gonna hear from you later in the show. That's gonna be later in the edited show. <laughs> but right now, we're gonna hear it live. We'd love to hear another one. What, what do you want to do for us now? Um, actually, we're gonna do a rise, and this is actually off uh, the original CD. And the read effect. So, all right, here we go. And this will be the acoustic version, very different from the one on the album. So.
again A Living on the starting line is getting old I look in the rearview mirror and see an empty space my throat is dry from all the dust There's dust all around me Does anyone remember when they had the lights? Well sit right down and tell me what it's like I look in the mirror now and see a stranger's face With a crooked smile and bloodshot eyes And the noose is getting tighter You want to hear me say rise I'm falling underground Far from the reach of sound Oh yeah I have a I need to let you know It's time for me to leave The air is stale and my chest is hungry I look at the open road And I have to ride I got my things packed up in an old suitcase And the wind's in my hair now You wanna hear me say rise I'm slowly falling down Somewhere beneath the ground Oh yeah I have a way to go Until I Rise, rise, rise again Thank you so much for having us too. It's great. <laughs> great to have you guys on the that show. That was nice. So, I can hear that. I can just imagine that with a full band sound. That would be really, really nice. Yeah, we have all kinds of tricks too, extra sound effects and things like that. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait till the 29th of September to see those tricks at the Cherry Cola. Um, but well, so anyway. really think that's very the cool thing about this band. Okay, the reed effect, and the, what I think one of the effects is is that. He changes the lyrics as he goes along, and Melinda kind of has to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, is there a website or something for... Uh... Um, well, if you Google us, we're all over the place. We're on Twitter, Bandcamp, uh, MySpace. We don't have our own specific 
Like we're still there's enough out there, there that you don't really need your own website, right? Yeah, that's right. Actually, I do have my own, which has a link to the read effect. So uh, actually, uh, www.kirkreed.ca, and you'll be able to hear, see everything uh, that's going on with uh, us. Okay. Uh, there. All right, and that's awesome. read R E E D. Uh, that's right. right. Kirk yeah, two E's. Okay, guys, great to have you on the show. Thanks for doing this. Thank Sounds you, guys. Great. Thank you for having Good great luck with sound. the superstars contest. Yeah. Superstars.ca. And um, remember your lyrics. We'll see you on the 29th. <laughs> So uh, we're going to um, speak to Alice. We're going to fix it all in editing. And we're going to come back with uh, Alice and Harvey uh, from the Tone Expo uh, right after this. Right after something. Something that we'll fix in editing. <laughs> it's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland, where scientists tested hundreds of chemical and biological substances on at least 7,800 servicemen. So could this really be happening? Well, joining me to help discuss this is Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. Dr. Ross, tell me, is this really happening? Did the government really take part in mind control experiments on soldiers? What kind of stories have you heard from the survivors of these experiments? I know you've had access to thousands of documents from the CIA. Well, it's just like you just said, there's two kind of streams of information. There's stories from survivors, and then there's the documents. So if I go to the documents first, they're very, very detailed, 15,000 pages, uh, plus, and we're starting back in 1950 with projects called Artichoke and Bluebird, which were then rolled over into MK Ultra, which in turn was rolled over to MK Search, and then all the documents stop in 1973. So in that era, 50 to 73, uh, there's a whole host of different types of mind control experiments, hypnosis, LSD, special interrogation chambers, and brain electrode implants. And so there's projects uh, in the CIA documents and in Army records where electrodes are put into uh, dolphins, and the dolphins are directed by remote transmitter to deliver a bomb to a target. And there's a discussion of uh, similar technology in cats and other animals. There's uh, research funded by the Office of Naval Research published in mainstream journals where electrodes are put in the brains of cats, dogs, and their behaviors controlled, and even human beings at uh, Harvard and Yale. So, so this is absolutely documented fact. All right, we're coming back on the show here. Okay, Allison uh, Harvey is here. She's very concerned about that glass over there, Allison. <laughs> What is going on? This I, is the tone effect. Is the read effect? No, it's the read effect. To the tone uh, effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. It's the, it's it's the Virgo something. effect. It's something. You, you obviously have a very... When's your birthday? April 24th. Okay, so she it's is Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. Oh, Taurus. Oh, Taurus. Yeah. Stubborn like a bull. Yes. Smart like a streetcar. <laughs> Oh, that's not very. <laughs> I just have to say that every time I hear "stubborn like a streetcar," I don't. I stubborn just have like to, a streetcar. I, stubborn like a bull. I just have like to do that street streetcar like comment. Car. <laughs> I can't help it. It's programmed into my brain, oh, okay. Allison. Okay. So listen, we're talking about the Tone Expo. You've got another one going on, right? Yes, we do. Let's uh, tell us a little bit about it. Okay. So Tone Expo, as you correctly said, we're having the second one coming up on the fifteenth of September. The first one was a huge hit with a lot of people coming through. We had a lot of great exhibitors. Most of them are coming back. Are probably, good. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yes, it's a good sign when your exhibitors sign up to come again, back again. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to have some more speakers and workshops. We've added a couple workshops nice. to it as well. So. Okay, so what's the, just the general concept for people? The general there? concept is really showing people and, and letting people see the alternatives to starting a home business, um, the cost of it. Because usually when you start a home business, it costs a lot of money, two yes. thousand, and three, that's why four, a lot five thousand. Go there. Yeah, you, you don't even go there, but you want to do something, especially in this economy. Absolutely. Where you know it's you never know. Today you can have a job, tomorrow you don't have a job, and, and there's no longer twenty-year jobs or thirty-year jobs. Non-existent. It's, Whose it's fault gone. is that, Allison? Well, let's not get into that. Good but girl. the economy has changed. 
Okay. Let's just say the face of the economy has changed. Yes. Well, we were talking actually off the air about even even people who are um, snowplow drivers. Yeah. Yeah. You what know, happened? Yeah. They, last year they were almost out of a job because there wasn't a lot There's of no, snow. There was no snow. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do exactly? Start looking at you know starting your small business from home. And at an affordable rate. So not even is it a small business, you already have a system. Yes. So all these businesses are featured, they have a system and a in support place. team already. You don't have to look for that system. You don't have to do marketing. You don't have to do advertising. All you really have to do is go out and talk about it. Okay, now wait a sec. Is this a, fr you didn't say the word franchise. Should I didn't say the word franchise, but you know what? The industry of multi-level marketing does resemble a franchise because you're looking for business partners. You're building a network of good people to work with. You are promoting the product, just like a franchise would. Somebody okay. owns one, yeah. and then they have different ones popping up all over the place, like Tim Hortons has how many franchises. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with multi-level marketing in a very micro setting. So it's very small where you can start off, but you can grow very big and your organization could be global. So I can have a business in the UK, the Ukraine, um, in Jamaica, wow. in Trinidad. So wow. I could be global with my business because I have people who's decided to start a business based on what I'm doing. Well, that's one of the great things about Toronto too, right? Because yeah. uh, you know, you're only uh, less than you know, five, six degrees of separation from Probably anybody three. in the world. <laughs> much. If you live in degrees. Toronto. Yeah. Three degrees. Six yeah. degrees is the new three. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay, so it's it's network marketing. Is it yes. mostly or exclude? Is it almost I was all? I ninety nine point nine percent. We yeah. do have two uh, supporting vendors. Which one is a, as a tax company? So because okay. you need to know about your taxes and so on. So he's an excellent tax advisor, and he's been in business for over twenty years. Yeah. Okay. And then we have someone who does graphic and design and website work, because you want to promote marketing. your business as well. Yes. So we do have that as supporting, because people want to know. Yeah. So. Okay, so now what happened at the last one? The Just last, I want to find out because yeah. it's going to give people an idea yes. about what's yeah. going to be happening yeah. at so this one. So the last one, I mean, if you go to the website, we do have a testimonial um, okay. video okay. of what people talk That's about. That's ToneExpo.com. Yeah, ToneExpo.com. There is a testimonial video. Excellent. So we had people who joined a business. We had people after the show because we edited after the show. Mm -hmm. And we had um, people who joined who talked about it, who thought it was a great idea that people actually see this alternative to small businesses. Yeah, because well, a lot of, sorry. Okay, sorry. No, you go. <laughs> I was going to say that the really cool thing about this is you can start from $99? Less than. There are some Less companies than. that are $49. Because you're getting your feet wet. You're getting to know about the company. They come with the business tools. It talks about the company, the background. You may get a website to start with. You're logged in. You can go into the background. You're basically filling in the gaps with your product. So and even if you decide it's not for, for you. For you, exactly. And it's, it's not, not for everyone. That's you know, it's not. It's no more than going to a movie. Exactly. Do you know, you spend to a movie, $50 popcorn. for that. Yeah. With golden topping. With it, with the, yeah, the toppings are what, 80 cents a topping now? So. Yeah. And it's golden. And it's <laughs> So you know what? This could be a golden opportunity, but, but if it's not, it's not that big of an it's investment. Not a so big it's not going to make or break you. But you know what? We really want people to come out and see what's there because people have a misconception about network marketing. Yes. They there don't is, under you know what? There is a stigma. As soon as yes. you say that, people are like, oh. Yes, but no, it no. is a business like any other business. Yeah. It's a business like you can start from home with a lot more tools at your hand, a network of people that you can learn from. It's very much about personal development, developing yourself as a person, learning how to work with other people, how to network yourself in your business. And then you meet a lot of new people. So it's an opportunity mm. it's for a really personal development as well. Exactly, a hundred percent personal development. Well, certainly to gain okay. confidence, that's for of sure. Course. You know, and you grow. It's it's not something overnight. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's growth, two to five years. That's the growth period. Two, is that what you're telling yes, people? It's two it's to two five, five now, years. Isn't yes. isn't that really what they say with businesses? I yes, thought it was two like to five three years. to five. Yeah. yeah, three to five, two to five. Just it's like any point. business. Yeah, with any business. So you have to put in the groundwork. Yeah. We're not telling people, oh, you're going to be a millionaire overnight. This is That's the other stigma that comes yeah. with multi-level marketing. Eh? It's like, it is a get rich quick, quick scheme. Yeah, but it's not, it's you have to do the work. There's a lot of people will tell you, people who have made a lot of money with it, they did the work, they've been doing it for 10, 20 years. So it's not a get rich quick scheme. The turnaround is that you can make a lot of money in a shorter period of time compared to if you were working for 40 years. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. That you're able to write your own increases in the year. So, so you work smarter, not work harder. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Freedom of time. I mean, 
think it, I, I think about it in this way. I'm making $3,000 a month going to work. 36000 a year is not bad money. It's okay, you know. But what about if I could stay at home and do the same thing and own my own time? How cool would that well, be? There's no price. And there's you know, no comparison. No, you can't put a price on that. You cannot put a price. You can walk your kids to school. Yeah. You can pick them up in Absolutely. the afternoon. Absolutely. You can go do your stuff during the day. You can go to your meetings in the evening. You have your get-togethers to show your products. Yeah along the way how can and you, you can have fun at those get togethers too fun at those, what about when you you qualify for a free trip i know one person 17 trips in seven years free all wow. paid for by the company he's with how cool is that doesn't get cooler <laughs> yes that's, huh. so it's it's wow. a it's an industry that people should really take a look at even if they're still employed because even if they're still employed, why not right. do it you know ease yourself yes. into supplement your income you never know when you're going to be supplement your income E ease yourself into it that way if you do get the big layoff slip yeah. you've already got you your already plan going on. fully yeah. in place yeah. so now it's a great way to it's a great way to supplement that extra two or three hundred dollars in the united states when they crashed most people five hundred dollars would have made a difference yes absolutely so that absolutely. tells you a lot so an extra five hundred dollars that's like a hundred bucks a week let's say you went out and you promoted your product and you made an extra hundred dollars a week how cool is that just a supplement now, Allison, how long have you been involved in the network marketing game? Um, I've known about network marketing for a lot of years. I started with network marketing myself, mm -hmm. getting involved mm -hmm. about four years ago, five years ago. And I love the industry. I think it's a great model for people to follow mm -hmm. if they have the business mindset. Again, like you said, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. There are some people who will say, no, I'm not going to do this. But that's the, the truth for every business. There are mm -hmm. some people who will say, I'm not sit in this chair either. And there are some people who say, I'll not well, be I a host. I could be a dentist. <laughs> you won't be a dentist. So we know it's not for everybody, but for the people who do make that decision, it really can change Okay, lives. so to that then, Allison, who is it for? What is kind it of people should come to this? People who are looking for something more. People who are looking to change their lives. People who are interested in business. We are looking for people who are open-minded to building a small business. Do you have to have a good business mind? Not really, There's, because the support is there. The teaching is there, the development is there, the network is there, they'll train you. So all the tools are given to you. No experience needed, How no resumes. How about knowledge resumes. on the actual product? How well, that's why you start with the company and you start at such a low level because then you want to learn about the product. Okay. So you come in, you pay $50, $40, whatever, you're teamed up with somebody. And I must say the exhibitors at this event are amazing. Most of them have been in business for over two or three years. Okay. So you're getting a good leader. I have actually called the leaders to make sure that they've been in business. Good for you. They've worked for a while. They understand network marketing so that they can teach people. So you're not just going and sign up with Uncle Bob or join, you know, Sister Patty. <laughs> Uncle Bob. <laughs> you know, so you're not doing that. You're actually... Um, linking with people and being partnerships with people that know about it from the ground up which is a great thing and that's what we wanted to do we wanted the show to be filled with people who know what they're doing and how many people do you have how many vendors do you have on, um we're gonna know? have right now we have a variety of vendors okay we're gonna have about 25. that's see that's a great choice that's, that's a, a great, great number great, because yep. and the, the great thing is we're allowing for um variety we have people in cosmetics network marketing with clothes jewelry um, wow. Juices, you know, wow. health juices, antioxidant-rich wow. juices, things to help your heart nice. and all that sort of thing. Um, there's one lady who does coins. So instead of giving your kids toys, why not give them money, a coin, gold or silver coins, which will increase in, in worth the, yeah, yeah. year after year. And wow. you could even do that as a business. So there's so many different ways. There's healthy chocolate. You know, oh, there's I'm in. skin care, you know? So the things that you use, the things that you refer people, the things that you tell people about, all network marketing does is pay you for that. So whatever you like to do. Wow, that's a good way to look at it. Yes. Because you talk about it anyway. You talk about it. I talk about chocolate it. all the time. Well, you, you might get paid, for it. paid for it. I mean, somebody <laughs> could go to, to, the, uh, to the expo and find something that they would really just love to do. Yes. Or a product that they really would just love would to Would love with. to find out about it. Yeah. Yeah, and then they will make money from it. You know, I, I just had a lady, um, and, and I didn't know about this company that does clothes. And I didn't know there was a network marketing that had clothes. So the, the industry wow. is very varied. There's a wow. lot of different things. There's technology, there is financial, there is um, 
creative things, cards, postcards, online. There is the, the industry is wide open. It's infinite. It's infinite. There's over probably about a thousand different network marketing companies out there. You know, it's a lot easier to make money when you're passionate about something. Exactly. Eh? We want people to be passionate. That's why we have this expo. Take a look around. Talk to the exhibitors. They're knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. They are there in the trenches. They know how to build a business. They're making money with it. It's supplementing their income, their lifestyle. They're going on holidays and vacations, going to Mexico and Cancun whenever. That's the really cool thing about this. I think that makes this different is that you're actually talking to people who are in it, making money from it. Exactly. Whereas most people with multi-marketing, you go to the website or you maybe talk to someone in the phone. Yeah. Like, or they just no call real. you. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you don't know where real. they are. You yeah. don't know their background. But I do because I talk to them before they become part of the show. How long have you been in it? What do you feel about yeah. it? Would you be leaving? You know, because the worst thing is to join a company and tomorrow you go, there's chains on the doors. And that happens yeah. now. You wow. know, these days there are companies that shut down overnight. And it's the same thing with network marketing. You may join with somebody and they may leave. So you want to know that the person that you're partnering with, that you're becoming part of their network, is there for the long haul. So and, that you and can these guys a mentor, business. right? They're yeah, there's mentors, there's teaching, there's trainings, there's website information. There's so much information that wow. somebody could grow into their business. That's what it's for, to grow into your business. Nice. To, yeah. Okay, so it's uh, Saturday, September 15th, yes, right? Yes, Saturday, September 15th starts at 10 a.m., goes till 6 p.m. We have on the website, you'll see the presentations and the workshops. They're all included for the all access pass, which is $25 which is very, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be special. You don't have to, you just have to come down to the event, take a look at what's there. You might be surprised. And you might have some, you might meet somebody you got some great chemistry with exactly. and you just want to work with them and you exactly, like the business, yeah. right? That ha that's actually a really good point because that's very important. Very, yeah, you need somebody who you resonate with. That's very important. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a relationship because people in network marketing tend to become friends. Yeah. Not just working together, but they become friends because they want to help you. Yeah. In network marketing, I can't succeed unless I help somebody. So if you join with me, that's the nature of the relationship. That's the nature of the relationship. I cannot succeed if I don't help the p other people. You, you cannot succeed. Mm. Wow. So I have to help you in order to get where I need to go. And that's kind of cool. It is. It is. It, it makes you humble in a sense. It yes, makes you yes. want to reach out and help other and people. And it actually kind of takes away some sort of hierarchy. Yeah, thing there's too, no hierarchy. Right? It's how much work you put in. Because yeah. I could be here and you can join me today. And because of your drive, your ambition, you love the product, you talk to more people, you can pass me. In a traditional job, wow. how often do you get to become never, the CEO? No. How often do you become the owner? It never happens. No. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's a year in, year out drudge. It's going to work 8 o'clock, break at 10 o'clock, yeah. break at 12 o'clock, leave at 5 o'clock, go back again. So I, I don't know. I couldn't yeah. do that. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't want that anymore. Yeah. You have children. You want your time. You want the flexibility. And yeah. I think the number one thing with network marketing is giving you the flexibility of time. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially now, mm -hmm. and especially for females. Yes. I find that's a big thing with I females. I think about, you know what, like most of the network marketers I meet are females. A see, lot there of you them, go. yes, there because we're go. nurturers, we're, we yeah. take care, we network, we, we want to do well. And so. we also have a lot of responsibilities, yes. so we're trying to incorporate everything into our life. It's very hard to have a nine to five job right. when you have you know, young kids or you yeah. have, or, you know, ailing parents. parents or something comes up yeah. and you, or, you know, for the year you have two weeks off and something comes and happens yeah. and, and you can. So flexibility, time ownership for that same $3,000 that you That's would amazing. make. That's amazing. Yeah. This is what's nice about it. People think, oh, I have to make a million dollars, or I have to make a hundred thousand. It's really up to you what your comfort zone is with network marketing. If you're cool making two, three thousand dollars, I can, can stay at home. Job too. Great, and I can yeah. qualify for a free trip a year. Why not? You can get a car out of it. You can get a free trip out of it. You're building up a network. You have great friends. Wow. Yeah. So many benefits from a business that you can literally start for ninety-nine dollars, and I will wow. also be giving away one business to start. So if somebody nice. there who registers online, they come in to see a business, we'll enter them in a draw, and someone could get to start their business for free. Wow. To the tune of $99. Yes. Wow, very nice. Okay, and they, they should get the ticket in advance, and they yes. can sign up for the free the, to win the contest, because it's yes. cheaper than just doing it at the door. What's the website? It's if Tone Expo, T-O-N-E, E-X-P-O.com, yeah. and they can go there and get their tickets. 
because if they don't buy their tickets in um, advance, yes. they're going to have to pay more. They're going to have to pay more at the door. And they and won't you get, win. you can't win the contest You can't either. win in the contest, See, yes. So, do it in advance. <laughs> yeah, do this it in advance. This is a multi-level marketing queen here. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, so, but it's just really for people to go and take a look at the presentations they want to. We've put the times on there yeah. so you can decide which ones are more important. Do you want to learn about network marketing? A lot of people are online. There's a lot of techies. Could you imagine just building a business from home? Online. Yeah. We're going to have an amazing um, workshop with someone who teaches people how to build a business online. Yeah. So Stephen wow. Clark, you know, he does amazingly well. He has companies all over the world. He does global networking. And one of the big things is teaching people how to network online. So that would be a great thing for somebody who says, you know what, I don't really want to go and talk to anybody. I don't want to go out on the street and talk. They can literally sit at home, do their posting. People call them on their phone from anywhere in the world and you can get them in your organization. How cool is that? That there is amazing. Go. It's very, that very cool. Amazing. So we do cater for every facet. Once mm -hmm. you're over 18, mm -hmm. it's open for oh, a business. I have to wait till next year. Yeah. You know, wait. <laughs> two years, two years. Two. Oh, two years. I can't even count. That's how young I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Allison, this is good. Anything else we need to let people know about? It's um, uh, September 15th. ToneExpo.com to get their tickets. Yeah, they can, yeah, Victoria at the Park and Highway 401 area. 401, um, and 404. 401 and, and Victoria Park. And Victoria Park or DVP in Victoria Park. Yeah. yeah, easy so to get to. Easy to get to. Free over. parking. We're covering all the parking so people don't have to worry about oh, that's good. paying for parking. We want it to be a great experience for the exhibitors as well as the people coming in. It sounds amazing. If anybody has any, I you know, no idea of what they want to do and is, is open to any kind of thing, this is a great place this to go. This is a great place to what go. I'm not even that it's a place where you will learn so it's an educational forum as well you'll meet the people who are making the money that you can talk to one-on-one -on -one, which is what I really really want people to do to wow. come on out and experience for $25 yeah hey, that's lunch see how yeah. it might change yeah. your future yeah okay. yeah well what a great way to spend a Saturday especially it it'll is. be September yeah. and people will be thinking all about yeah. getting their Christmas work life is around the corner back in, in gear four yes. months you can start making some extra money just in time for the holiday season how cool is that yeah Okay, Allison, great That's to hear about this. this. Mm -hmm. September 15th at the uh, Days Inn at uh, 185 Yorkland Boulevard. ToneExpo.com yes. is the website. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you again for having me. All right. It sounds amazing. Okay, we're going to do something now, Sandra. I'm not what sure why. Do? I don't know. Everything we're going to do be it. fixed in editing. Starting now, and then we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs>
I was eating a falafel. Oh, cost me. Just uh, wrapping up the show here, we got Val Shearman joining us and Max Brandt. Oh, hello, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Great to have you guys here. You always know when Max is in the room. He's got this booming presence. He really does. And well, Ma and I just want to hug him. Here. And he knows uh, everybody. Max, I just always want to hug you. I know. Yeah, you already did that this morning. I <laughs> That's one hug a day is enough, Sandra. <laughs> for crying out loud. Okay. Uh, we're, I hugged uh, Linda first. Uh, I hugged her. And, um, Are you all hugged out You're all out hugged now? out. He's hugged out. He looks tired. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's all <laughs> hugged out. Tired. Sorry, we took all your energy. <laughs> okay. But so, also, I just wanted to thank Max because he's there every show, all the time, always out in the field helping out superstars. And uh, he's just a great volunteer. Yeah. Well, you yes, know, you I posted a video, even though she's not a singer-songwriter. There's this young person by the name of Alicia Mior doing um, Celine Dion's No Surrender. I think she was at her cousin's wedding. Mm. I think on the, on the I think it was on the video. The, the, yeah, on the past weekend on YouTube, and okay, like she's been on this program before. Good. Okay. Good stuff. Oh, so, so good. and today, of course, so we, had, uh, we had we uh, had Kirk uh, and Melinda, yes. the uh, the Reed Effect, and uh, yeah. they're in the contest, right? Yes, they uh, are. They're official contestants in the contest. So remember, it's original songs. Yeah. I'm still getting a lot of people that are coming to the website and they think they're going to do a cover song, yeah. but it's for songwriters and vocalists and bands. Remember years ago there was like Battle of the Bands. Well, yes. that's what this is kind of, but it's including kids, singers, solo artists, poets, whoever writes something down on paper that they can communicate with us. That'd be great. It's it's so interesting because there's so many contests out there for singers. I know. It's not about original music that it's almost a novelty. I know. And that's why I'm trying to get the word out there that it is for singer-songwriters because I didn't think there was enough and now they're kind of cropping up all over the place, kind of localized. Um, but we're trying to make this bigger and better every year. So, well, the problem for the singers and songwriters is there's not a lot of opportunity for them. So, not. so they're not used to looking. Right. True, too, as well, right? And they That's don't probably know why where you're getting to. a lot of just the singers because they're used to going out there and finding these contests. Exactly. Well, I last mean, this is one in a few and far between. Yeah, it this is. This kind well, of contest. It is. Last night I went to see like um, two bands that do what their own music and. They already made a few a few, a few LPs, uh -huh. but uh, most of them I know you know need to be in concerts like this so they can get well right. known more. And you're right, Max. It's perfect because this is by word of mouth. We yeah. haven't really gone out to any radio stations or television companies outside of this show to promote this. So it's all by word of mouth. And what we're doing on the show, thank you to that channel. You guys are great. I really appreciate your help every week. You guys are fabulous. You know, you forget to, that, that, that you're a part of this too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you guys are great. I actually look forward to getting an update. Great to see what's going on, and, oh, and because awesome. I and I'm such a big fan of, of this project and and, and homegrown talent. I think it's so amazing yeah, to do, and we just we just don't recognize it enough. That's and it's so right. nice that Superstars is doing this. That's so nice. That's to and have. you remember too, I did work at Q107 for a long time, and they did do the Battle of the Bands every right. year, and there were great bands that came out that like Honey Moon Suite and so on and so forth. So that's what, there's no radio stations do that anymore. I wish no, they would. No, they don't actually. I wish they do. You know, yeah. take a show and dedicate it to having a battle of the bands. That would mean they'd have to play one more song than those 20 songs oh, that yeah, they keep right, playing for the over, and content. over and over again. I know. I know. That's okay. probably the, what right. it is. I know their hearts are in it. Okay, uh, well. But that's why we come up with shows like this. And so we're hoping that the original songwriters and singers out there, please get together and come out there. And there's a lot of them out there. Us. So please come out. Yes. Don't be shy. And, don't and be give shy. it a try. So they go to the website, superstars.ca. Yeah, with, with a Z. A Z. And are you doing a wise guys thing this week? No, we aren't. Not this week. We're okay. we're gearing up to go to another club. Yeah. Uh, so we will have another ongoing audition. But they can contact the show. Yeah. Or they can contact the website and they can come here and audition too. So. Okay. Doesn't matter. All right. Just 
it'll get through to me. Somehow, and I'll, some way. I'll get a hold of them. And yes. please, whatever you do to every singer somewhere that's out there, um, if you're going to be there to take part in the contest, you know, you know, just just show up to be a part of the contest instead of just being an idiot. I'm not sure what that means, Max. I don't know. But I will well, I, take when, that advice. <laughs> <laughs> we had this clown that came that came on, oh, you know. Okay. Yeah. He was playing the drums on the table. Max didn't like that. He was getting rather loud, so. Well, was, okay. I guess. So behave yourself, people. Behave yourself. Okay, a Even table is not, is not an right. instrument for an indie artist. Yes. That's right. Okay, guys. Right. Thank Thanks you so for much. doing this. We'll see, see you, next, you uh, next, you uh, next show. Next show. Okay. I get a hug next time, right, Max? Yes, you will. Thank you. You won't be all hugged out by the time he gets here <laughs> next Thanks time. Thanks a lot, you guys. Okay, so that's it for the show, Sandra. Great show today. Already? Yeah. And we're going to wow. go out with, uh, we're going to play, I think we're going to play at the... Uh, the Reed Effect as All we right. go out. The Reed Effect. Excellent. And it's thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And thanks, Sandra. We'll see you awesome. more. Awesome. All right. right. High here fives. High fives. On that channel.com. Woo. They did the high fives, too. Okay, that's okay. it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.
lost in the void again Happens every time and then I lose my head again There's always something Thank you. Thank you. Slowly 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, too. It's great.